Champions League uh, with one up and one down, and the one up was a, a Championship Grand Final. Um, but the most well-attended playoff series was when it was only a top five playoff series in the Super League. Yeah, um, I, I like the top five format best in terms of if you just look at the format, I think top five really rewards each place, you know, kind of proportionally all the way down from one to five. Uh, I just think if if we're going to go to divisions of 12, they're, they're going to have to try and keep the interest going for as many clubs for as long as possible. So it might have to be a six. But I mean, that's that's just my opinion, really. Well, I, I'm not saying that's going anywhere. Two up, two down as well, wouldn't you, to keep that? that Jeff yeah. and more clubs involved um, David Knight got in touch uh, this is quite a good point he says if my memory serves me correctly the current system was put in place after a long and extent- expensive study by external consultants I think it was Deloitte wasn't it who, uh, who, who did the external consultants oh, was it KM, KPMG, oh, KPMG wasn't it? possibly yeah. yeah I think so yeah but he's Something right it is, was yeah. it was there was a, a lot of fair amount of research went into that um, and there'll be some clubs now that, that tell you they got dragged into that kicking and screaming, but they did still vote for it. There has to be some accountability from the clubs themselves here. You know, some of them voted for this system that don't like it now. They've got to think carefully about what they're voting in next yeah. time. Uh, D- David goes on to say, isn't also, isn't the fundamental problem that the game faces at this time a lack of money coming in and an abil- inability to compete with the NRL and Rugby Union for player wages? Messing with the league format seems like a distraction. It certainly was a distraction at the press conference, as you explain. It was, but Robert Elson almost made that point himself, saying that, you know, people, this word panacea he used, that people are getting obsessed about the structure. Um, but but that is that's not where his role is going to be ultimately. His role is going to be growing the sport commercially and getting more money in there. And, and I think he understands that and he said that. So I don't I'd, like I said before. I hope people don't kind of think that he's just come in there and said we need to get away from the super eights to to move forward because I don't think that's the case whatsoever. That would paint an unfair picture of his personally role in in the press conference. I think he sees that the more key things as exactly outlined there in that tweet that we need more money coming into the sport to compete with other competitions that are our peers. I'm glad, I'm glad that that's his focus. Um, we've had Carsten Brummer and Paul Michael Craig have got in touch with what the structures would be that they'd go for. We'll, we'll leave those conversations for another day, but thanks for getting in touch, guys. Mike Dodd has said, um, I hope the suggestion of loop games from the Total RL article is way off the mark as we will get into a situation where finishing top of the pile has a significant element of luck to it, much like the issue with, we have with Magic Weekend at the moment, only extended. So, yeah, we've, we've covered that a little bit um, already as well um, but thanks for getting in touch Mike and it's one of the problems that needs to be ironed out for sure if we, if we are changing the structure as the press conferences yesterday proposed I think it'd be nice to fish out kind of a, a little bit of a fond look at the at the Super 8s period What one of the things I, I think I remember my first ever time that I felt inclined to comment back on one of your tweets was about the whole conversation of promotion and relegation versus versus licensing way back in 2013 or so because I'm a I'm a pro franchise kind of guy and you're certainly a pro promotion and relegation kind of guy and it felt like at the time the super 8 structure was just about the closest to a mid ground that people like me and you from different sides of the argument could could come together on and see it sort of doesn't satisfy either fully but starts to satisfy a bit of both um especially with the qualifiers and the idea that the same teams in that will get a little bit more funding and be able to get the championship teams to be able to be closer to the super league teams and compete more regularly with them um, and that sort of stuff so that has kind of led to some some exciting moments over the last Absolutely. three and a half years and um, hopefully some more exciting ones to come i'm pretty certain there will be but um i was going to ask you what your two defining memories are going to be um from the super eights era as it stands and i say two because obviously one of them is that that salford finish against hull kr in in the 2016 season um climax so so what have you got for me yeah, I mean, you can't get away from that. That, that was just an incredible afternoon to, to watch, to report on. Uh, there was so much going on, and, and that that was sporting drama like you couldn't write, wasn't it? The, the whole 18-10 down with, what, barely two minutes to go and score two tries in the fashion they did and then, and then kick the drop goal. It, it was... That was incredible sporting drama. And it was um, one of the best drop goals we'll all ever see as well. Absolutely. You could not strike a ball better, could you, than he was. You know, you, when, when he was lining it up, you were sat there almost at the back of stand thinking, this is where, you know, what what are you doing here? But he couldn't have struck that any better. No. And he knew when he kicked it, didn't he? I think as soon as it comes off his boot, you can tell he's got a feeling that's going over. And 
Um, it's a picture you know, I've stuff used that many times, the, the, the celebration with the two arms aloft running away, sort of in celebration, in, a little bit in amazement of what is just done, but at the same time, kind of just pure elation of what it's meant and knowing that it did mean that and, and all of those things. I mean, it was kicked so well, it nearly landed in the in the stand, which is a, a good effort, yeah. kicking that way at, at <laughs> Craven Park. What, what other, what's your other main moments? Remembering? So slightly, slightly different from most, I think, I think the fact that Batley got into the qualifiers kind of raised everything that was good in, from a championship point of view about the, the system, you know, for a part-time team on a, on a budget that was an absolute fraction of clubs in their own division and certainly of Super League clubs to defy the odds. And, and you know, they, they had a win away at Swinton, I think it was, to get in there. And if you look at the scenes there of their travelling support and their players and what that meant to them and John Keir, that was a great sporting story in its own right. And and this system, while I'm not a massive Super 8s man, I, I'd, I'd prefer something more simple with promotion and relegation, but it did create stories for us in the media and talking points. I think probably its downfall is that it, it's not been reflected on the terraces, has it? So no. while we've had these fantastic, dramatic sporting moments, I think overall the system hasn't brought more people to the game, which is ultimately what you want to happen, and that, that might end up being its downfall. But... There are fans of, of clubs like Halifax, Sheffield, Featherstone, Batley who who won't forget getting where they got, who who won't forget, you know, Halifax going to Warrington and giving them a game last year and, and situations like that, championship clubs beating Super League teams. They're great moments for fans, you know, and, and I think people will always have the fond memories of this system even if it does yeah. fall by the wayside. I mean, even though it wasn't quite in the system as such League One, but in the same era, I'm sure you'll... Uh remember with great fondness the when Rochdale travelled down to Toulouse in the uh, sort of playoff final and sort of thing and, and won that game to, to go up um, yeah I mean they, they were written off by everybody that team you know they weren't given a chance I think they're still talking Rochdale about the fact that there was only Toulouse coloured ribbons at the ground because they thought it was that much of a foregone <laughs> conclusion so that, that was an against the odd story as well and but look for me this is, this is why we need some form of promotion and relegation because this is what this is what fans remember days like that. It's I just, just think we need to find a way to make it, it a bit more stable and attractive for, for new fans and, and easy to understand so that you get the balance of the excitement of promotion and relegation with an easy to understand system perhaps yeah. and, and a bit more stability. Surely it was a lucky coincidence that the, the French flag colours and the Rochdale Hornets colours are <laughs> quite well. I, I mean, I wasn't there that afternoon. Sadly, I, I was kind of listening. I think I was at Salford listening on the radio. I barely believed in it. The, I mean, um, the, the, but, but certainly, it's, it's something that the, the Rochdale people still talk about. Even in Super League, there's been moments of drama in, in the Super 8s. I mean, that Ryan Hall try for Leeds yep. against Huddersfield. Absolutely. I was following that one furiously on Twitter, like everyone at the DW Stadium. Was. That, that was the worst game of all time to report on, by the way, because <laughs> we had it all written as one team winning the league, and then something changes, and you might as well throw your laptop into the stand and start again basically but it was terrifically exciting and that's absolutely a magic moment from this period to remember definitely yeah and then maybe I don't want to finish on a downer but the the, the, the other one that sticks out for me is, is Danny Addy's kick just holding its line and not swinging back towards the post in that first million pound game that was an absolute heartbreaker uh, and what might have been for those yeah. two clubs now you look at the different direction that they've gone in since then where Bradford are now and Wakefield have been top four contenders in Super League and it's amazing how our sporting fortunes can go one way or the other, but you know that does happen in promotion and relegation situations. Not not just in this Super Eight no. thing. I always look at Oldham, who who lost the 2001 NFP Grand Final, and they had Mike Ford as coach. If they'd have gone up then at, at Boundary Park, there's no reason why Oldham couldn't have been a Wakefield or a Huddersfield in the coming years if they'd have been given that million pound every year from the central funding. And as it happened there drop down to the third tier you know that's, it, it does happen in sport and there's talent beyond that that the sport lost because of yeah, things like absolutely. that yeah, I'm sure yeah <laughs> yeah okay um, I'll finish up then with giving you a chance to sort of let people know how they can follow you I'll, I'll, I'll head that up with um, letting you know about I don't know if you've ever realised this but there's an interesting um, thing we share in common the Super League pod and, and Gareth Walker which is right. uh, our Twitter banner picture is taken on the same night at the same at the same occasion. No, I don't right. know if you've Fantastic. ever realised that. Obviously, the I haven't realised that. No, that yeah. was a good night at Spotland. Yeah, one one of the one of the great nights of the of the 2013 World Cup, of course. Um, Ireland against Fiji, wasn't it? The 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 game. It was, yeah. I didn't think I'd live long enough to see Scotland full again, so that was a fantastic treat. Well, what a night that was. It was great until walking out, weren't it? Because that was the worst raid I think I've ever walked back to the car in. <laughs> 
Um, okay, yeah, so how can people find you on social media and where can they read uh, your stuff if they're not already all, all over that, which I'm sure most people are? Uh, it's just at Gareth Walker on Twitter. Um, I have been encouraged to set up a Facebook page, which you should be able to find via my work. Uh, and then just, you know, via all the, the three mirror titles and, and our website, we, we try and do a bit of online specific stuff and, and, and that's separate from what goes in the paper. So hopefully we've got covered. Uh, a few bases um, and you know I'm, I'm lucky to work for a company that does still take rugby league very seriously on a daily basis so long may that continue yeah that's excellent you're also seen weekly in league express aren't you as the championship correspondent there uh, yeah i'll continue to do that and uh, and getting that insight from the guys outside of super league in situations like this and i'll still find really helps because these guys you know whatever the top tier says and i understand completely you know the focus on the top level and how that if, if we get super league right other things will follow there are people outside the elite that, whose voices deserve to be heard at different points and, and this is one of them at the moment you, you don't run the show anymore at rugby league world but you, you still contribute regularly to that magazine yeah as well. I, I had to give that up when um when i i've been started on all three titles at the mirror and, uh, and had two young children it was just something i had to give and um, but yeah I, I still work for for that publication and, and love doing so as well i think it's uh it's got a great history and it's got an important place in the game and we're not trying to um influence you either way on the article you suggested you might be writing for an upcoming issue about rugby league podcast but I, i'm hoping this helps us get a good mention oh it's been case. written this morning mark so you're in there already don't worry about that <laughs> um i've um I've been spending over my morning runs listening to all the different podcasts and stuff so I can uh, give a fair reflection of all the different ones available but keep up the good work because uh, it's clear on social media what a good following you've got and, and people appreciate it yeah thank you very much and thank you very much for being involved with this edition of SLP Shorts thanks Mark okay everyone uh, just to uh, so wrap things up for this SLP show I just want to thank you all again for listening to this the fourth SLP show and I want to give a big thanks to Gareth I ended up keeping him five or ten minutes longer than I'd, uh, than I'd told him I would so a bit cheeky of me there but thanks for him very much being involved in the show uh, if you don't follow him already on Twitter like we talked about it's at Gareth Walker uh, you can read his stuff in print or online at the Mirror and in League Express each week and Rugby League World each month so make sure you check those out particularly if there's going to be an article that, that mentions your favourite podcast the uh, Super League Pod if you want more SLP in your life you can find us at Super League Pod on Twitter and Instagram it's facebook.com forward slash Super League Pod if you want to send us in any views you can do through so through social media or by email superleaguepod at gmail.com you can also get more SLP content on our blog, which you can find at superleaguepod.com. There will be something going up on the blog that relates to the announcements of this week, the thoughts of Alan Kale on what's going to happen. So look out for that uh, coming up. And you can find the main weekly show and subscribe through Spreaker, iTunes or YouTube. You can find us on the Podcast Addict app. You can also find us on the Leadcast Android app with some other top RL listens for you. You can go to rugbyleaguemedia.com as well and, and see the whole... Uh, family of alternative rugby league media there for you to get enjoying with your ears and your eyes Uh, and we want to thank you finally for listening and until you hear from us again keep enjoying and supporting the greatest game of all rugby league